Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure for me to rise today in support of C356, an act respecting a national strategy for dementia. Liberals have long called for federal leadership in establishing a pan-Canadian dementia strategy, and we believe the federal government must work with the provinces to establish such a strategy. Families throughout our country have been having to deal with loved ones who have dementia, and they need our help. They need our support. They need that national strategy to be able to cope, Mr. Speaker, and that is what this particular piece of private members is aiming to do. <clears throat> According to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, in 2011, there were 747,000 Canadians living with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. That means 14.9% of Canadians, 65 and older, were living with cognitive impairment. Without intervention, they project that figure will increase to 1.4 million Canadians by 2031. Because the population of Newfoundland and Labrador is aging at a faster rate than the rest of Canada, this increase will hit my home province particularly hard. In 2011, 16% of the population was 65 years or older, a number expected to increase to 20% by 2016. Unfortunately, as the age of the population increases, research has shown that the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia does as well. The Canadian Medical Association raised this issue in the 2013 paper toward a dementia strategy for Canada saying, quote, given the terrible toll that dementia currently takes on Canadians and their health care, and given the cer certainty that this impact will grow more severe in coming decades, the CMA believes it is vital for Canada to develop a focused strategy to address it, end quote. Clearly, this is a pressing problem requiring urgent action. And yet, despite pledging in 2013, to find a cure or treatment for Alzheimer's by 2025, we remain one of the only G7 countries without a strategy. Australia, Norway, the Netherlands, France, and the United Kingdom all have national strategies to address this growing problem, but Canada does not. This, Mr. Speaker, is unacceptable, especially given, given our aging population. Alzheimer's disease puts enormous emotional stress on millions of families in Canada. One in five Canadians, 45 and older, provides some sort of care to seniors living with long-term health problems. In 2011, that amounted to 444 million unpaid hours spent by family caregivers looking after someone with cognitive impairment, such as dementia. From an economic perspective, this amounts to $11 billion in lost income and a loss of 227,760 full-time equivalent employees in the Canadian workforce. The impact on the Canadian economy is matched only by the enormous strain on those family members who provide care for their loved ones. The emotional stress caregivers face was highlighted in a recent report by the Mental Health Commission of Canada, as well as a report from the World Health Organization, which stated between 15 and 32 percent of caregivers will experience depression, and up to 75 percent will develop psychological illnesses as a result of caring for others. These family members are doing what they can, Mr. Speaker, but they need our help. One of the major reasons patients end up in long-term care is because their caregivers are simply overwhelmed. According to Dr. Roger Butler of Moore University's Faculty of Medicine, and I quote, if you've got a well-educated, trained caregiver feeling supported in their community, they won't burn out as quickly as if they're left to their own devices, end of quote. A comprehensive strategy that supports caregivers is essential for the well-being of both the patient and the caregiver. A truly comprehensive pan-Canadian dementia strategy will not only have a positive impact on patients and their families, 
but delaying onset of Alzheimer's by two years can save our healthcare system $219 billion over a 30-year period. Patients with dementia often occupy acute care hospital beds while waiting for placement in long-term care facilities. This only serves to exacerbate the problem of waiting lists and increased health care costs. Without action, this problem will continue to grow. During the 2011 federal election, the Liberal Party of Canada laid out a clear, comprehensive dementia strategy, including support for research, families, patients, and communities. The plan called for increased funding for research to target new treatments and therapies and to accelerate our progress in understanding, treating, and preventing brain diseases. It called for increased awareness, education, and prevention programs to support families and combat the social stigma of dementia. And it called for stronger support for home and long-term care, as well as protection of income security for families struggling to cope with the cost of caring for a loved one with dementia. Another key element of that strategy was the introduction of legislation that would prohibit denial of life, mortgage, and disability insurance, and rejected employment based on genetic testing that shows risk of future illnesses. Canada is the only G7 country without legal restrictions on access to genetic test results. This forces many Canadians to make an impossible choice obtain genetic testing results for illnesses, including Alzheimer's and face discrimination, or avoid testing and taking steps that could prevent or mitigate illness in the hope of obtaining things like life insurance. This regulatory void perversely promotes the avoidance of potentially life-saving tests. Action is needed urgently. And yet, despite pledging action in the 2013 throne speech, the only action this Conservative government has taken to block efforts on this front in the Senate. Despite government inaction, individual Canadians are working together to develop treatment and prevention protocols and to improve the lives of patients and their families. This year, volunteers across Newfoundland and Labrador will be participating in seven walks for Alzheimer's to raise money for support programs and services for those living with dementia in their communities. Families are also helping other families by participating in province-wide family support groups accessible by phone and Skype, reducing isolation and providing much needed support to caregivers in remote communities like those in my riding of Brandon Buren St. George's is one way of ensuring that families are able to cope, Mr. Speaker. And we need to make sure that more of that happens. But the thing is, is that it needs to be part of a national strategy so that it isn't left to those who are the caregivers to be able to do things to help those that they love and others love who are hit with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Mr. Speaker, I take pleasure in raising awareness of the important work being done on dementia treatment and prevention in my home province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Dr. Ann Slater, professor of medicine at Memorial University, has done incredible work on the development of provincial strategies on healthy aging and Alzheimer's disease, as well as on the prevention of elder abuse. Elders with dementia have the highest incident of mistreatment and abuse in long-term care, and the prevention of this sort of terrible abuse is a topic on which Dr. Roger Butler, the Associate Professor of Family Medicine at Memorial University of Newfoundland, has worked extensively. He is also currently engaged in a new project using telegerontology as a novel approach to optimize health and safety among people with dementia in Newfoundland and Labrador. For his work as a teacher, family physician, and on behalf of the Alzheimer's Society, he was recognized by the College of Family Physicians of Canada as Newfoundland and Labrador's family physician for the year in 2013. Dr. Slater and Butler, along with some of their colleagues throughout the country, are making incredible progress on this important and increasingly prevalent issue. Imagine what they could do, Mr. Speaker, with more resources and support. 
What we need is coordinated su support from the top. Federal leadership is needed to develop a truly pan-Canadian dementia strategy to support the important work of these individual researchers. Thank you. Reprise the debate. Resuming debate.